Hello everybody, Paradox Seal here. Welcome back to a brand new video, everyone. This is episode 11 of Building a Discord Bot with Python 2024 edition. And in this video, we are going to set up a basic logging channel. And we're going to talk a little bit about events with Discord.py. Now, there is no commands in this video, and it's going to be rather short. But before we get started, I did want to show you this website here, uh, which is discord.py's official documentation hosted on readthedocs.io. Now, basically what this website here is, is a full guide and set of instructions for creating your own Discord bot with Python. It has everything you could possibly think of from events, which is what we're going to be dealing with, voice related things, application info, webhooks, Discord models like your .member, .user, .guild, same thing with channels, some data classes, and exceptions. Now, if we go ahead and click on any of these, like for an example, these Discord models, let's click on dot member. We can immediately see all the attributes that we can access from that member object and all the methods as well. Now, these are all pretty important to us because discord.py can be a rather complicated library to use. And this documentation gives us all the information we need about each object, each event, each, any kind of reference, each exception, etc. And we're going to be using this website to go over some of the events that discord.py has. So under event references, let's click on something like messages. And as you see, we have all the events that have to do with message. And there's a little description that uh, tells us what the event is for, and it's called when a message is created and sent. It tells us what it requires in order to be enabled, which is intents.messages. And it has a parameter message. We also have one for an edited message, a deleted message, bulk deleted, and raw message edit, raw delete, bulk raw delete, etc. So there's a lot of events that we get to choose from here. Now, if we go to members, we also have, a, have uh, events that deal with members, like on member join, remove, raw remove and join, update, user update, member ban, unban, on presence update. Now there used to be a kick uh, event, but that was effectively merged with the on member remove, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, feel free to correct me, but I'm pretty sure there used to be an on member kick event that was merged. Now, feel free to look through all of this, and I will have this link in the description, by the way. But that's enough of the events. Now, we're going to be going over four events today. That uh, two have to do with messages and two have to do with members, and it was the ones we've just talked about. But before we start coding, let's talk about what an event is. So an event for discord.py is something that happens. And basically when our bot is running, it is constantly, every second, listening to any type of change that occurs in any of the discord servers or their channels that the bot has access to. So, when a message is sent, that's a change, and we have an event that listens for that, and when it senses that change, or when it sees it, it calls that event function, and then we can code whatever we want to happen when that event function is called. Now, in our main file, to create an event, we use the at bot.event or at client.event uh, decorator. If we're working in a cog, like back to our leveling system video, we use commands.cog.listener because we're listening for that event. And if you remember, we actually used on message events in this situation here to create an, uh, a good leveling system for our bot. So let's get started. At bot.event. And we're going to deal with a message event today. And it does have to be exactly typed out with this name on underscore message. Otherwise, it will not work. 
And we're going to pass in the parameter message because that's what it says. If we come back here, parameter message. And this is optional, but we can type hint it as the message object just so we get access to all the different types of properties. Now, keep in mind, if we just left message in there and that's it, it would work the same way. It does not change how your code works, but it's generally better practice and it allows us to use the IntelliSense provided by our IDE to see all the uh, properties that we can just hit enter to autofill in. Now, we need to specify the text channel that we want this uh, message to go to. And we're going to do so through an ID. And my tab 9 is being very smart and already predicting exactly what I'm going to do. But let's go ahead and type in channel. Bots.get channel. And in here, we need to pass in the channel ID where we want our logs to be sent. Now, if we come to Discord, I already have a logging channel made, and there's nothing you have to do special with this channel. Maybe you want to make it private to your staff. That's usually what most people do in a Discord server, but there's nothing special you need to do with it. You just need to right click on it and copy the channel ID. Now, if you do not see this button, then what you need to do is go to your account settings, navigate to advanced and make sure developer mode is switched on. That is how we can see the channel IDs, as well as other important information like user IDs, server IDs, etc. Now that we have copied our logging channels ID, we can come back here and just paste that ID into here. We can paste it as an integer. Do not paste it as a string. Do not do that. It needs to be an integer because if we hover over this get channel, it is calling for an int data type of ID. Now, with an on message event, it is listening for when a message is sent. So ideally, what we need to do is we need to check if the message's author is a bot because we don't want to log our own bot's message or any other bot's message for that matter. Matter, sorry guys. So if message.author.bot because if you remember, if you come back here, we're taking in the message. And if we go to the Discord models for message, if I can find it, here it is. One of our attributes or properties is, if I can find it, author. And this author is a member object and when we go to the member object one of its attributes are if we come back here bot and this bot is basically a boolean expression so it's going to be either true or false true if it is a bot user false if it is not and that's how we're able to type in message.author.bot right here now, if it is a bot, we're just going to simply return. We're not going to do anything else because the return statement in Python is going to exit this function before executing the last line coming after it. After that, uh, tab nine is pretty smart. So I'll just go ahead and type that in. Let's I'll make this a little bit better. After that, we can go ahead and send this message to our channel that we defined here. Message sent in message.channel.mention from message.author.mention. Now remember, uh, with a message object that we're taking in uh, in our parameters here, it has other objects as its properties, like channel, author, and more. And each of those objects that are part of the message object have their own attributes like mention, an ID, and more so we can use dot mention for both or if we want to we can use dot name as well or dot id whatever you want i prefer mention because it gives us a clickable link to use and then you may be tempted to just insert message here to get the message's content but we cannot do that because message is an object 
And remember, whenever you try to print an object in Python, I believe it can actually print out the uh, memory address for that object. So we need to get the contents by typing in dot content. And just to make this look a little bit prettier, I am going to do a new line here. Now let's do one for delete. And this is actually literally the same thing. All we're doing is just changing the method may, uh, name. And we can change our message itself a little bit. So instead of on message, it's going to be on message delete. And let's go ahead and run this code. Perfect. Our bot is online and we can confirm by clicking on it and seeing that it is indeed online. So let's go to general. Type in hello world. Subscribe to Paradoxial for a free cookie. And it pings us in our logging channel. And it says message sent in general from Paradoxial. Message hello world. Subscribe to Paradoxial for a free cookie. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this Discord.py series, or if you're enjoying my coding videos in general, you need to follow this instruction right here. I promise you won't regret it. But let's go ahead and test out our message delete event that we have here. And the uh, reason why I still have this is because whenever we delete a message, if we're a bot, then we don't want that to be logged. We don't want to log other bots deleting messages. So that's why we're going to keep this check here. But let's go back to here and let's try to delete this message. And look at that. We have gotten pinged. Message deleted in general by paradoxial message and then our message that we deleted. Perfect. So we just create a very simple logging channel that logs the messages sent and deleted. Now remember, there's other events for messages. If we want to log the message uh, edited, we're going to define both the before and after as message objects. And then we can go ahead and get their uh, objects properties like content, uh, dot channel, um, the person who sent or uh, edited the message, etc. Pretty neat. But I will let you guys figure that one out yourself because I promise it's not much different other than you are adding an extra parameter into the event. Let's go ahead and do something with the member event. So at bot.event on member join and pass any member object and we're doing this because if we go to members we pass in member as a parameter and we're going to type in this at discord.member we're also going to uh, define our channel again and then we're going to type in await channel.send Member.mention has joined the server. Now, for the on member leave, or what's called on member remove, you can do that. And let's add a little bit of a sob emoji. Because uh, we're sad that they left our server. They, we're, we, they left our beloved home. So we are obviously sad. So, two new events. Now we're logging when a member joins and leaves the server and this is going to uh, work for other bots joining the server as well and that's actually what i'm going to use as an example so i'm going to invite something like me6 because this entire series me6 has effectively been my test dummy so we're going to invite me6 real quick and me6 has joined but wait a minute, this didn't work. Why is that? All right. Oh, that's because I killed my bot. So I actually need to kick it and then join it. So that's fine. At least we'll see that they work still. So if I go ahead and kick it, 
it's now gonna say me6 has left the server. Now, remember, it's working because, if I'm not mistaken, they have merged the kick and remove events together to just be the remove. So, it's gonna say that they left anyways. But let's go ahead and invite them back. So that way we can see that's our uh on member join event is working fine and voila me6 has joined the server pretty neat so we just made ourselves a pretty nifty little logging channel that's gonna log everything that happens in the server now how can we improve this to make it look a bit more professional, more cleaner, easier to read? Well, we could use embeds if we wanted to. It would work the same way. Uh, it's just in the send uh, method here. We just type in embed equals and then whatever the name of our embed is. Uh, another way we can improve this is actually having our channel server specific. So, the channel ID is static here, it's not a dynamic ID, but what we can do is uh, we can get the ID from a database by perhaps uh, in an SQL query here, we would insert message.guild.id because that guild is an object a property of message and ID is a property of ID of a guild. So. If we're working with a database, whether it's local or on a MySQL or Postgre server, uh, we can use it to uh, make it to where every server can set up their own logging channel with our bot. But if your bot is only going to be in one server, uh, specifically being your own, this is fine. This works perfectly fine. But uh, for those of you who are planning on making your bots public, I will allow you to figure out how to make it dynamic uh, through a database because that's fun getting to do things on your own. But uh, that was it for this episode. If you have enjoyed this video and would like to see more Discord.py tutorials or more coding videos in general, be sure to let me know. Subscribe, leave a like, comments telling me how your day was and if you're stuck or if you just want to hang out with other programmers be sure to join my discord server we are nearing 900 members and as well be sure to create yourself a free account on my official website link will be in the description so far at the moment you can upload your own scripts to share with other people publicly and I do plan on and am actively developing the forum system as we speak. But uh, with that all out of the way, you guys have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.